so we've obtained our formulas for beta naught and beta 1 and then what I want to show you is that these two formulas are actually unbiased estimators for beta naught and beta 1. So when we've collected all of our data we can substitute all of the data into these formulas and this would give us an actual value for beta naught and beta 1 and those would be our estimates for the constants beta naught and beta 1 itself. But then before we collect all of our data these y terms over here are actually random variables. So this means that this beta 1 term and this beta naught term are actually also random variables. So we can actually consider the expected value of these terms. So uh, these y terms are random variables because in simple linear regression we're assuming that the y terms are related to the x terms in such a way. And then we're assuming that we already have access to the x terms. And then we still don't know what the y terms are. So before we, we actually observe our data, the y terms are actually random, and the randomness comes from this error term over here. So recall that we assume that the error term follows a normal distribution with a mean of 0 and a, and a variance of sigma square. So that means the y term will also follow a normal distribution with a mean of beta naught plus beta 1 xi, and it will have a variance of sigma square. So you can understand this with our uh, GPA example. So if you can imagine x being the study time and y being GPA. So you can imagine interviewing your students. So you interview n students the night before an exam. And then you ask them how much time they've spent studying per day. And so after you interview all of your students, you get all of your x terms. And then you want to know what the GPA is, but they haven't even taken their exam yet. So for them, their GPA is actually a random variable. They still don't know what it is yet. So their GPA, you would expect it to be related to their studying time by this formula. But ultimately, you don't know what their GPA is because there is some randomness. And the y term itself follows a normal distribution. And then in that case, this formula over here actually causes this b1 term over here to be a random variable as well. And the same goes for this b0 term. And then in that case, we can consider the expected values of these two terms and we're going to show that these two formulas actually give us unbiased estimators for beta naught and beta 1. So what that means is that the expected value of beta naught hat is actually equal to beta naught itself and the expected value of beta 1 hat is equal to beta 1. So this is what we're going to show in this video. So uh, starting off with the beta 1 term, first of all before I find the expected value I'm going to rearrange the numerator a bit. So the numerator is equal to this term. So I'm not going to write the subscripts and all the superscripts to save myself some time. And then I'm going to rearrange this term just to make the calculations a bit easier. So I'm going to break the brackets apart like this. And then you will see that this term over here is actually equal to zero. I can just pull this sample mean of y outside of the sigma and then you can see that I'm summing all the x terms, so that's just equal to n times the sample mean of x, and then I'm minusing the uh, sample mean of x n times, so I have n copies of the sample mean of x. So this thing is just equal to zero. So the, no, the numerator is just equal to this term over here. So now we know that beta 1 hat is equal to the sum of xi minus sample mean of x times yi, and then we have the denominator. And then in order to save myself some time, I'm going to int introduce a, a, a shorthand for this. I'm just going to call this SXX to save myself some time so I don't have to draw all the symbols every time. So this is our beta 1 hat. And then now I'm going to consider the expected value of this term. So finding the expected value, first of all, I'm going to pull this SXX to the outside. So all the X terms are non-stochastic. They're all non-random, so I can just pull them to the outside. And then for the numerator, what we have essentially is just x1 minus the sample mean of x times y1, and so on. So x2 minus the sample mean of x, y2, all the way to xn minus the sample mean of x, yn. And then for the expected values, we can actually just move this symbol to the inside, which would give us something like this. So I can just pull these terms out. They are not random. I can just pull them out. And the same goes for all the other x terms. And then I'll move the expected value 
the term in, to the inside, and then they will only be applied to the individual y terms. So what we have now is the sum of xi minus the sample mean of x times the expected value of the ith y term. And the expected value of the y term is just equal to beta naught plus beta 1 xi. So you can just substitute that in. So the expected value of yi, this is just equal to beta naught plus beta 1 xi. And then now I'm going to break the brackets apart again. So we have, first of all, we have beta naught times xi minus the sample mean of x. And then we have beta 1 xi times xi minus the sample mean of x. Now this term, we just <coughs> go through a similar argument as before, a similar argument as before. So we, you can see that we're summing all the n terms minus n copies of the sample mean of x. So this whole thing is just equal to zero. And then for the second term, we see that we have this beta one here. I can just pull that out. And then on the inside, we have this, we have this xi times xi minus sample mean of x term. And then instead of xi, I'm going to write this out as xi minus the sample mean of x plus the sample mean of x. And then I hope you recognize this form from the previous video because I'm going to go through that same argument again to rearrange this term over here. So I'm just going to group this up into two different components. And then for this, we multiply them together to get a square. And then for the second term, we get something like this. And then once again, you go through the same argument as before. So you're summing n of the uh, all the x terms minus n copies of the sample mean. So this is just 0. And then in the end, you have this term divided by sxx times beta 1. And then we call that sxx is just a shorthand for this, for this term here in the denominator. And you'll see that it's exactly the same as this term over here. So both of these just cancel each other out. So in the end, we're left with beta 1. So that means the expected value of beta 1 hat is just equal to beta 1. So that means beta 1 hat is an unbiased estimator. And then now we can do the same thing for beta naught hat. So beta naught hat is just equal to the sample mean of y minus beta 1 hat times the sample mean of x. So I can just rearrange everything like this. So we just found that the expected value of beta 1 hat is equal to beta 1. So this term here is just beta 1. And then for this term, we have the expected value of the sample mean of y. And the sample mean of y is just the sum of all the y terms divided by n. So I can pull the n's to the outside, and I can move the expected sign inside. So we have the sum of all the expected values. And then we call the expected value of yi. That's just equal to, that's just equal to beta naught plus beta 1 xi. So also the summation sign. And then we have minus sample mean of x times beta 1. And then here we can uh, sum everything up. So we have n copies of beta naught. And then we have beta 1 times uh, the sum of all the x terms. So if you sum all the x terms, that's just n times the sample mean of x. So you see that the n here, they cancel out. So in the end, you have beta naught plus beta 1 times the sample mean of x minus the exact same thing. So both of these will just cancel out, and in the end you're left with beta naught. So you can see that the expected value of beta naught hat is just equal to beta naught. So that means this term here over here is also an unbiased estimator.